So hi guys, my name is Mahesh Kumar and I am your instructor for the cyber security. And today we are just talking about some uh, security and risk management. So uh, we have, uh, you know what, talking about some different team, different uh, security uh, concerns for the data. So the first thing is we're talking about his confidentiality, sharing of the informations within standard people. Data should be protected in all the states. So data it at rest, data in process, and data in motion. So how you make your data is confidential. So uh, this is the first question I'm going to ask to you, you guys that how you going to uh, confidential of your data. So data are in the format of the three, the at data at rest, data in process, and data in motion. So we require some different type of security parameters of the data. So you need to provide some, you know what, uh, encryption stuffs uh, AES 256 into the data and uh, how are you going to uh, secure your data so the first things we have talking about here examples of quality is requirements PII personal identity informations and PHI personal health informations must be protected against disclosure using approved algorithms password and sensitive fields should be masked password at rest must not not be stored in a clear text. TLS transport layer security must be used for transmitting sensitive information. The use of unsecured transmissions, FTP, etc., should not be allowed, and log files should not store sensitive information. So, the matter of fact that guys, you have some confidential data. So, how are we going to protect protect your data? Wait a second. Hello. Hello. So, uh, the so sorry guys, so again we are here. So, uh, how you make your data is confidential. So, we have data and use data is transit and data in motions. Motion is, you know, what uh, going source to destinations. Suppose you guys are working on their websites and you just going to asking for uh, uh, you know what any websites that uh, going to amazon.com sites and then you need to uh, purchase some um, uh, you know what anything from the websites and then and the, the your queries will go into the servers okay so data in motions is going to be working so data in processes and data at rest at your data at your back you would like to take a backup sort of things in your data at rest and data and process whatever the things files your work are working okay so this is the process is going to be working so you require so confidentiality required into this the confidentiality of your data and these are some examples then PIA percent identified information suppose you are guys and you uh, your Aadhaar card your state bank of in, state bank informations uh, your banking banking informations your Aadhaar card informations your driving license these are some, you know, what your personal identity informations you you're not going to be shared to anybody. So it's if you this happen, then it's good that I will be compromised. And your password should be sensitive informations required, and it's, it should be masked. Okay, that is why we guys uh, are, uh, today uh, we are going to use some multi-factor authentications, and password at first must not be stored in the clear text. So uh, we we require the complex password. Its minimum range is eight digits in complex passwords. Okay, and uh, the, the TLS uh, factors, so we have source to destination sites. So we are not going to use some TLS transport data security to source to destinations data trans uh, transmissions. The use of unsecured transmissions, FTP, should not be allowed. Okay, so FTP, uh, you know what, we are not going to allow. At the same time, we are going to use some TLS. Previously, it was working as a SSL, but right now it is TLS that is going to be working over there. 
we have some log files should not be stored sensitive information. So uh, if you want to store your information, log files, you need to be stored in a specific place. So this is like uh, some examples about the continuity. So I hope you guys understand the sharing of informations with the um, intended people. So data should be protected on all the states. Then we have talking about the integrity of things. Um, so production, production against systems or software modifications. Systems should perform as expected. Code injections can modify the databases. So integrity means that uh, once you modifications of your data, okay, and the code injections can be modified the databases. Input validations is a mic is, is a mitigation techniques. Data integrity uh, ensures accuracy and reliability of data. CRCs, checksums, message digest, hashes, max. These are some examples of you know what um, you know you going to perform on the integrity of data. Inter internal, ex internal and external consistency of your data. Some examples of integrity requirements. Uh, input validations should be used in all the forms of ensure that the data control language is not injured and field size and data type types are enforced. So the matter of fact that how you uh, you know what validation of your data, okay, in, in what forms, and published software should provide ensure that users should with the message digest so that user can validate the accuracy of the complaints of software. So the matter of fact that what I'm trying to tell you is this: if you're going to modifications of your data in, in middle of once you're going to source and destination, so you require some hash values, you require some MAC addresses, you require some checksum others integrity sort of things. You require some input validations. You require some code injections. Okay, uh, the code injection because in the databases how the users are going to be modifications things has been performed by the hackers. Then we're talking about the third one is availability. So data should be available all the time whenever it's required. So metrics used MTD, main time uh, MTD uh, I'm not sure this full form is meantime a uh, disaster sort of things or oh, the RT was recovery time operate recovery time objectives and and RT is recovery point objectives. So uh, we uh, for the availability sort of things you need you need to check it out the other the three terms MTD, RTU and RPO. So your data is available or not available, you need to take the backup. And if you take a day backup, and if you're not, uh, and you're working in a company, enterprise companies, then the MTD, the company time objectives is how, what the time it will take to take the backup, to restore the backup. And the company point objectives, which point, half an hour or 20 minutes, your loss of your data, you uh, this, how much point you don't, don't want to take it. Like you have to take a snapshot. Half an hour. Sorry, sorry for the delay. No. Yes, please go ahead. Yes, sir. Sorry for the delay, sir. Uh, I was uh, just outside. Just uh, the, right now, only I have. I thought uh, class will be on nine o'clock. Then I uh, will get that late. Okay, no problem. So right now we have just yeah. going to start the sessions, and we have talking about here is a, you know what the CIA tried. Okay, and this is the security and risk management. So uh, uh, data security we are talking about the information security we are talking about here. How are you going to security the different different type of security parameters you need to be input on the uh, on the security side of the data. So we uh, this is CIA thread is you know that very well confidentiality, integrity and availability. Availability. Okay, so MTD, RTU, and RPO. This is things going to be working as main time disasters, recovery time objectives, and a recovery point objectives. So uh, suppose you are working in a banking or you bet you are working in any domain. So uh, recovery time objectives, how, which, you know what, uh, suppose two hours or three hours, power shut down in your company, okay? So the matter of fact that which time you will take the backup? Three hours before you have taken backup, so you can going to restore it, okay? So Security point objectives. Which time frame you going to be take your data? Okay, and RTO recovery time objectives. How you going to recover? How much time it will take to recover your data? Suppose 
the data you recovering time is uh, four hours or five hours. So at the four hours, the production will be down. And recovery point objectives, which point? Suppose you are taking the differential backup. So you have taken the backup yesterday. So you you are missed only for today data only. Okay. So this is the RPU comes to the mean time disaster. So this is uh, the things I have to check it out again. Sure about MTD because uh, we're talking about in some few slides later on. We have some SLAs, service level agreements. Okay, main time between failures, main time between recovery. So this is how much time it will take to recover your data. Examples of availability requirements, software all shall meet availability requirement 99.9% in specified in the SLA. So the matter of fact that guys, if you're working in a company uh, like a banking sector, like insurance sectors or aviation industries, they require your data as 99.9%. Okay, and your data it will be availability is 99 percent. For the data, you, you should be do sub SLAs, service level agreements with the different different vendors, suppliers. Software should support uh, access up to 200 users simultaneously. So the matter of fact that suppose uh, you you have purchased any softwares, uh, it will gonna be required so 200 number of users going to be simultaneously going to be use it. Okay, so available of your data, available your informations to the specific users, to the authorized or authenticated users. This is all about in the con in the con in the availability sort of stuffs we're talking about here. So the mission critical functions uh, in the software should be stored on a normal operations within 30 minutes. So the matter of fact that suppose you are working on a banking sector, in the banking sector suppose that five minutes of data loss they can going to be adopted the disk but half an hour data they they will can't, can't be tolerate like that so you need to go for the risk assessment state same times what are different different type of risk on different different conditions then we're talking about some IEEE is uh, rendifications authentications authorizations auditing and accountability so identifications it, it means that who the user it is what is the user name you are joining company and your user ID is created, username and passwords. So we are talking about here is identifications. Like DJ is a user of the company. Once you're going to insert the password, then it is going to be authenticated. Okay, it's going to authentication into the Active Directory or domain controllers. Wait a second. Okay, so identifications, it means same the user name. What's your username? It's your identifications. Authentications, it, it means that your how do you want to authenticate? Okay, uh, so different different protocols we're talking about like LDAP protocols or uh, uh, lightweight access, access protocols. Okay, and but uh, authentication is mainly you're talking about some how you're going to authenticate from the uh, specific uh, computers. Okay, so TACAS plus and radius and uh, uh, we have accuracy controllers and we have LDAP is a protocol going to use it for authentication stuff. So these are some, some examples we are talking about so authentication. So whether you are the right person or not, it is going to be authenticated. You are going to provide your username and passwords. Yes, it is authenticated. Uh, fingerprint sensors. Yes, that is scanning. Yes, authentication. Biometrics controls. Yes, it is the authentication same, same sort of stuff. So we have different different type of authentication things. How do we want authentication? These are different parameters we're talking about in here. Authorizations, whether you are the right person, whether you are the wrong person, this is going to be checked out. Authorization, which things you have authorized. You suppose you are in the Linux environment. We have some permissions. You have read, write, and modify permissions. What type of permissions you are? Which things you have authorized, which things you are not authorized to access the things in the auditing. In the auditings, it is going to check it out. What things you have going to check it out? The, the logs, the alerts will be coming. Okay. Suppose you are the user and you have access the database folder into the Active Directory. Okay. The logs will be available. So whether the, you are the right person or the wrong, wrong person, it will be you know what evidences the collection of logs. It is it is comes under the auditing. So auditing, it means that you can uh, you can say that it's evidence sort of things. What do you have 
achieve what you have done into the databases or anything so all the auditing will become to the picture so event viewer is in the windows environment you have checked it out we have some logs available of applications and different stuffs and accountability you, which things you have accountable or which things you are not accountable suppose i provide the permissions to or you know what uh, read only and you are going to do some modifications in the databases so you are accountable for the same things we have some another terms comes to the picture is non repetitions the non non repetitions is basically it is going to used for suppose you have sending the data to source to destination and you cannot yeah, deny that i have not sent it so uh, this is the you know what non repetition it is you cannot deny that whatever thing you have to send it so identification users should be unique identified your username is always be unique into the environment suppose jijo is one user another one is jijo so jijo and jijo 1 and jijo 3 whatever the naming conventions you going to be implement in the company this is the different story this is all about then we talking about some authentications so validation of an entities uh, identity claim so what things you going to be claim you are the right or wrong what things you going to be claiming authorizations confirms that uh, an authentic authenticated entity has privileged and permission as a way so whether you have authorized or not authorized okay whether you have the permissions privileges or not so the matter of fact that you have identity in access management and privileged access management so this is going to be things you will check it out into the uh, cloud computing and different uh, things then we talking about some auditing so any activity in the applications systems should be audited so whatever the activities you have performed it, it is going to be check it out in the logs accountability tracing and action in to a subject suppose uh, you which things you are accountable which things you are not accountable i am going to press it from the accountable you are accountable or not accountable for same things okay and then we talking about some plans so we have we have different different type of plans in the organizations the strategic plan for 5 years tactical plan we have some operational plans so we have 5 years plan suppose your company is going to migrate into the cloud computing your company is going to do compliance so companies are always going for the 5 years plan what you going to achieve in the 5 years in the company we have some tactical plan mid level plan or short term plan 6 months to 1 year plans okay so uh, you going to implement some firewalls you going to implement some uh, servers you going to implement some different different devices biometrics system with name number of things so the 6 months to 1 year planning is this all about we have some operation plans shortest plans days to weeks suppose you want to implement some logs you need to check it out some you know what um, create some policies you want to create create some strategies create some standards for the company so it's a very operational plan it's very short plan suppose company will ask you that you need to create some uh, it policies so it's a documentation sort of things it will take around days and weeks to going to uh, complete all those tasks so it policies password policies hr policies transport policies database policies network policies you going to create those sort of things in the operation plans the sort of plans is all about and technical plans it is about to 6 months to 1 year your company is going to migrate migrate at different branches suppose uh, the company is going to create new branches three branches four four branches in next one year so you need to make sure that how you going to make migration steps understanding the migration things in the five years your company you know what going to open a uh, five uh, corporate offices in different countries then you need to be go for strategic plans of the companies so primary goal of change management is to prevent security compromises so we have change management so change management is going to prevent security compromises okay um, the matter of fact that why we going to create change management uh, first thing is comes to the picture is incident management any incident will be coming to your company like mail network goes down database goes down servers goes down okay the the power outages in the company so it's 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 a it's an incident for the company it is going to block your uh, operational uh, working the production will be lost in time so the incident management team uh, the service test team is going to be uh, create a ticket for the same and then it, the ticket will going to Uh, take care by the uh, different different teams like server engineer or network engineers desktop engineers 
okay and they will going to provide some temporary solutions but after suppose the issues will not going to be recovered then the ticket will move to the problem management team the problem management team is going to be checking out what sort of problem it is does this problem comes early as well if it's not so like that then it will they will going to provide some root cause analysis rc okay then then uh, if suppose the problem is not going to be resolved then it will go to the change management team okay. and the change management team is going to be uh, checking out what are security compromises in the company so protection mechanism we have some layering defense in depth series and parallel so the matter of fact that guys if you talking about some security parameters we have several layers of osi layers so if you talking about implementation of uh, next generation firewalls we have uh, talking about some uh, you know but one to seven layer security parameters so suppose you going to working on the security layers yes sir uh, sir this uh, data kind of stuff you told told me like uh, incident so on do we have certain tools yes we have service now we have some hp tools we have some vpn protect tools so we have different remedies is a software which is going to create you know ticketing things for the companies remedy bmc remedy bmc remedy okay. for incident logging for ticket creation sort of stuff is going to be working does it make sense yes sir yes okay perfect so uh, production uh, so we have some you know what if you talking about some security concerns right so we have some security we have some production mechanism as well so we have some layering okay layering it means that defense in depth suppose you talking about some uh, you know what just next generation firewalls okay Oh, so excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Sir, is a penetration tester and auditor different, or both are performed by same person? What? What? Tell, tell me again. Yes, please come again. Sir, penetration tester, sir, penetration testing. We do as a cyber security analyst. We do penetration testing, no? Yes. the uh, in the penetration and testing my dear friend vulnerability assessment and penetration testing are two different things vulnerability assessment so has been for... yes okay sir carry on it is uh, going to be performed by the security analyst okay in the company so uh, uh, suppose the vapt uh, uh, vulnerability assessment and penetration testing is uh, performed by the security analyst and we have different teams in the companies uh, if you talking about some uh, you know what uh, department wise so we have red team we have uh, blue team and we have gray team okay so the red team are going to uh, offensive security and the blue team is a defensive security team and offensive and defensive uh, both things are done by the gray team okay uh, so we have some different different teams available into the uh, security parameters and security incident uh, or we can say that the security uh, uh, guys or or ciso or chief technical information officer or we have some different different security uh, incident handler or security administrator or the the other person is going to be uh, doing some penetration testing so uh, before you going to be uh, doing the penetration testing okay uh, it requires some management approval okay and the, we have some agreements on the same that we are not going to be compromise your information right so this is all this is all about you know what uh, we talking about the uh, uh, you know what penetration testing so we have a different uh, task for the same we will going to study in, in depth in next few slides okay in in next few things uh, so uh, layering so defense in depth suppose uh, i would like to know that uh, do you guys know uh, same layers of osi layers yes sir Hello. So physical layer, data link layer, uh, uh, and um, third layer is a routing. OSI layer. Is, uh, sorry, is a routing layer. Fourth. 
I'm no. talking about OSLA, Open System ah, Interface okay. OSLA, seven layers. Yes, yes, sir. yes. You guys know or not? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So if you're going to do uh, defense in depth, okay, the, the security things you're going to perform it. So what are the different different security uh, things? Uh, you know what data should be compromised in the, which different different layers? Suppose you are working on a uh, uh, okay uh, physical layer. So what are the uh, you know what uh, you know what um, things is, is available on the physical layers? In case physical of layer. layer. Which device comes? Gateway uh, controllers like firewall, router, and kind of stuff. A no, cable. the routers are working on a network yes. layers. Yes. Cables, uh, cables. Uh, UTP cable, OFC Cat, cable. OSC. Cat yes, six, yes, right. Yes. RJ45. Yes. So uh, uh, I request you two guys. Uh, Remember seven layers and uh, um, and examples of each layer. Okay, uh, which things one of working at which layer? Okay, okay sir. like segments are working on the transport layer. Okay, and uh, if you're talking about uh, in the data link layer, which is working. Okay, frames are working. Fragmentation is working on data link layer, right? Yes, yes. So please remember all those things, basic fundamentals. We will going to cover it all those things later on. But uh, in the defense in depth, we require all those stuffs to be remembered. Okay, we have some uh, abstractions layers, so we used for classifying data or assigning rules. So we have uh, abstraction layers. We have four layers where the data will be going. Okay, the upper layers or lower layers sort of stuff. So we have separate slides for for this. all those things. You're going to be understanding this. It's much better way. Data hiding. We uh, we are going to do some you know what data hiding and encryptions. We have our different different algorithms of encryptions: SSJ, 256, 3 dash, AES. Okay, these are all sort of things. And data hiding, we going to you know what uh, making the data hiding so that you know what no one can want to be see all those things. So these things, uh, these are the some you know what production mechanisms we going to adopt it in the company. Somebody going to uh, ask the question that how are you going to protect your data. So you can say that we first things we're going to layering, defense in depth, abstraction of data, classifying and data and analyzing, assigning rules. Suppose uh, data abstraction it means that uh, you have uh, there are two types of categories. Uh, one data is government data, where the data is from the defense data from the you know what uh, Ministry of uh, India or whatever different countries. So government government data sort of things, and we have some private data. So the government government uh, corporate data we consider in the private sector. So we're going to classify the data. Suppose uh, the nuclear deals and defense data are a very secure data, okay, and very confidential data we can say that. So as per the classifications of the data, you're going to provide a security, okay, and then you assigning some rules and responsibilities on the same. So we have different uh, different type of assigning rules and responsibilities and accountability on the data, and we have to classify the data in the different different ways: sensitive, sensitive data, top secret data, secret data, okay, public access, accessibility data. So these these are some uh, data classifications. And if you talk about some data hiding, okay, you're going to hide your data. This is on also the term, and encryption is also one of the terms. Uh, key things gonna be you're going to check it out. So that's really uh, good for you to production of mechanism you want to be understand. Mm -hmm. And then we, I'm talking about in the middle, uh, we have data classifications, so government data, okay? So it's, and we have some uh, private data, we have top secret data, we have some confidential data, we have secret data, private data, confidential data, sensitive data, and the classified data and public accessible data. So uh, once you're going for the company, you should be understanding this uh, type of data, okay? So you are mostly your work, guys working on the private sector. So in the private sectors, you you find that we have confidential data, private data, sensitive data, and public accessible data. So what do you mean by confidential data? You could, your confidential data is your uh, you know trade secrets, your patents, your copyrights, okay? And uh, your financial informations, your 
person identify information private data it means that your uh, we have com companies legal tenders agreements different different uh, uh, client tenders okay agreement sort of things sensitive data is your uh, uh, public uh, your personal identity information suppose your aadhar card okay your salary slip and uh, uh, your driving license and public accessible data companies posting a job portals so this is your public accessible data and the government side we have top secret data so suppose your military data or your nuclear deals data this is your top secret data because if it is going to be compromised then there is a huge loss for the country not for the company it's for huge huge loss for the nation okay so it's a national uh, nation uh, secret data is top secret data we have secret data we have some confidential data and we have some unclassified data so you need to be categorize the data and then you going to put the security okay and what type of security will be implement suppose we have top secret data with quite grave damage it will going to provide a huge damage on the same secret data is a critical damage in the company confidential data is a serious damage data and unclassified data is no damage suppose you have unclassified data you have some you know what uh, your personal uh, uh, you know what you have some uh, google copy you have some files and this files are compromised then there is nothing lost for you because it's a unclassified data you have downloaded from the google okay for learning purpose so it will, you again going to google and going to download okay and confidential data is a serious damage okay and top secret is a grave damage means that your top secret data will be leaked so make sure once you go to protection of, of the data protection of the information security you have some four things will be available and you going to be categorize the data in different different classifications hello so this is the requirement my dear friends just try to understand we will talk about more things into the next few slides and then we have socket security rules and responsibilities so senior management management ultimate responsible suppose uh, you guys are working on a company and there is a you know what you have not activated the windows okay and there is a penalty the microsoft will be going to raid in your company and they will going to provide a penalty on the company so overall you are not going to uh, activate the things but ultimately the responsible from the company the management senior management is responsible for all those things suppose you are working in a company and the cyber crime will be there happened and okay and the the security the your company's uh, information is going to be compromised so ultimately the responsible of your top management you remember that sometime back in the in the facebook uh, the information private informations are leaked to outside of the customers and ultimately mark zuckerberg need to provide responsible for the thing and he is uh, provide a public release and provide informations to in front of all of the court or in the media okay so uh, i would like to say that the all of the responsibility of the top management the senior management for uh, for security reasons hmm exactly hello कंपनी okay security professionals information security team it means as uh, your ciso chief information security officer cto chief technical officer chief uh, operating officer so these are some you know what uh, the designations i'm talking about here for information security teams data owner classif classifies the data so financial the finance manager okay the the head of finance is the owner of the data of finance the hr hr head 
HR head is the owner of the HR data. Okay, and he is going to classify the data. Suppose in the finance team, one of the guys are onboarding, and then finance owner is going to say that what type of accessibility need to provide by the IT. Okay, so IT is not responsible. The information technology persons are not responsible. What type of uh, permissions and privileges need to provide to the user? Overall responsibility by the data owner. What type of responsibilities he is going to provide to the use, new onboard users? So as per this, he will going to instruct the IT team to provide the the permissions and the privileges on the data. And data custodian takes care of the day-to-day -day activities performing backups. So the you are the IT person, so you are the custodian, data custodian. You are the responsible for taking the backup day by day. Active, okay, you are the responsible for storing your data. End user are going to access the uh, access the resources of the company. Auditors responsible for reviewing the data, control frameworks. So these are some of the security those and responsibilities you need to be take care of all those things, right? Uh, uh, you are the, you are the that data custodian, so uh, you have responsibilities to overall manage, managing the data of backup and store the data. But overall, you are not responsible. What type of permissions you going to provide? Yes, you have the availability, uh, the console available uh, to provide the permissions. But you need to, uh, you know what, take the guidance from the data owner. The data owner is, you know what, providing the information that what type of permissions and privileges need to provide to the user. So we have some uh, frameworks, the COVID and COSO frameworks and goals. What do we need to do? ITL is how do we achieve these goals? So we have different different type of uh, you know what uh, uh, frameworks. So TOGF, uh, COVID, COSO. These are some frameworks. Frameworks or goals or uh, methodologies or best practices. So you can say that these are the you know what the frameworks is. It will tell you that what is the best practices for the company. Suppose you are in the company and where where there is no frameworks like. Um, any incident will be happen. No one call logging. There is no network guys. There's the thing, desktop things. The server thing is not available. So what is the procedure in the company? Is anything happened? Then what is responsible? Who is accountable? Who is responsible? So the accountability, the responsibility, use the work. What type of work he need to providing? So your key are key responsibilities area or key performance indicators. This is the right approach will be telling by the frameworks and goals what to do and, and need to do okay and itl is you know what to achieve this goal so itl is an information technology infrastructure library it will going to tell you know that what things need to be checked doing it then we're talking about some new things like do care doing the right thing and prudent plan okay so it means that you are doing, doing the right things like a, a prudent man so do you care it means that your uh, responsibility to doing the right things. Due diligence, practicing activities to maintain due care. So what are the practices? How can we uh, maintain the, maintaining the culture of the company? How can we maintain the environment of the company? Suppose your company environment is not going to uh, take the USB or magnetic devices to the company inside the company okay and so it's so a due care due uh, diligence the security guard will, will going to check it out uh, your bags they will going to they will, he will going to check it out all your belongings once you going to enter the into the company security policies its security policy is a mandatory document that defines the scope of security needed by the organizations so security policies you have seen that we have talking about some it policies hr policies transport policies as per the policies, this is things we going to do it. As per the policies, we not need to do it, doing the things. As per the IT policies, we need to retire the the laptop or MacBooks after three years. You have some policies. Okay. So the matter of fact that the security policies are the mandatory mandatory document of the company. And this is going to be approved by the top management. 
and it is you know what created by the uh, the executives but it is going to be uh, the managers are, are you know what going to be approved all those things we have some standards mandatory requirements so uh, standards if you are going to implement the firewalls in the company if you going to implement uh, the mobile device management if you going to implement the email management solutions so what is the uh, standards of your uh, mobile device management what is the standards of your firewall suppose your company is pci dss payment card industry company compliance and in the in the, in the payment card industry wait a second Okay, so we have some standards like uh, suppose you have procurement of firewalls and then you need to uh, implement some IDS and IPS in uh, okay, uh, intrusion detection systems and intrusion prevention systems. You need to enable the antivirus management systems. You need to enable uh, the uh, the monitoring and alerts. Okay, so these are these are some stuffs you need to be uh, you know what check, check out the stuffs. Okay, and uh, so uh, we have some uh, baselines. So baseline is a minimum security requirement. Suppose you are going to provide some uh, uh, black tops to the development team. So what the configuration is minimum requirement for the development teams. Okay, suppose you are going to implement a software. Okay, in this software it is required the Java, Java, GRE. Okay, Java the time environment sort of stuffs. So uh, you guys need to understand the, the baselines. What is the minimum requirement for the companies? We have some guidelines, so uh, it's, op it's optional. Okay. Suppose you're working in a company and in this company, it is required some guidelines. You need to uh, uh, come on time at 10 a.m. in the morning and then you have to leave the company at 6 p.m. Okay. This is the general guidelines. So it is sometimes you're going to order uh, optional. Okay. It is going to be uh, you taking it sometimes uh, accept it and sometimes you're not going to be accept all those things because you are the IT person sometimes you have got lots of work then you need to stay in your company and long 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 hours then this is the guidelines we do not be going to follow it okay so, so guidelines is it's, it's an optional sort of stuff okay and procedures step by step documents maintain integrity of the business so yeah the procedures is a, is a SOP standard operation operation standard operation procedures operating procedures so in the SOPs or procedures, this is step-by-step -step documentations like uh, you need to uh, create a flow, flow chart, okay? In the flow chart, what you're going to do it? The first step, you need to log into the systems. The second step, you need to um, uh, open a systems. And then third step, you're going to open a file. The four steps need to unlock the files. The five steps need to write down something. And then the five, six step is going to save the files. So these are, these are some you know what steps you need to be followed to maintain to integrity maintain all of those things. So I hope you have understand the due due care due diligence uh, security policies standards the best lines guidelines and procedures. So these are the some you know what the, the, these terms will be going to be used it once you work in the company and that. This is the responsibilities, those and responsibilities of different different personalities in the IT securities. And we have some talking about some data classifications and we're talking about some CIE productions. Okay, and we're talking about also as well the plans of the companies. Uh, strategic planning, tactical planning, and operational planning. These are some sub plannings we need to follow at the same point of time.
okay and then we have another topic like threat modeling so threat modeling it's a security process where potential threats are identified categorized and analyzed and so proactive measures and reactive measure so threat modeling first of all you need to understand what type of different different assets in your company okay so each and every assets whether it's a tangible assets or it's intangible assets you need to identify your laptops your macbooks your chargers of the laptops um, your switches your routers your firewalls your cables okay uh, or you uh, you can say that your cctv cameras you have some biometrics we have some retina scanners okay so we have different different uh, this these are some assets of the company okay uh, due to this is this is if the assets will going to be damaged or it will be compromised then the loss for the company so first of all you need to identify the assets and then you need to categorize okay uh, the categorization i already, already suggest you which is more compromised which is more give you the the business impacted more more and more okay and then you analyze the what type of loss okay if this is going to be compromised or it is going to be damaged then what type of loss in the company okay so in this threat model like you need to uh, have to uh, you know what things you're going to do it like proactive measures and going to do some reactive measures so proactive measures we can say that design and development so uh, what you going to do in proactive is just that the things are you know are not going to be damaged right now but you need to uh, take care how you going to design and how going to development the things okay so the planning part the designing the architectures the planning sort of stuff this is the okay this is has been done from the proactive measures and the reactive once the product has been deployed suppose i am going to provide some examples you have internet service provider like tata or airtel or anything so once the, the the internet goes down in the company and you are going to log a complaint to the isp this is your reactive approach okay and suppose you are going to deploy two uh, internet service providers and you need to create some load balancing into the firewall or okay and once uh, isp goes down then another another isp comes to the picture okay so you have you know what high availability sort of things going to create okay and active passive mode in yeah. so in the high availability mode you have all the two isps going to be working at the same point of time so one is goes down another another one comes to the picture so there is no production loss and active and passive you have active is going to be running at the same time and once active is goes down then you need to enable the the passive one so it will take 5 to 10 minutes to uh, loss of your data or loss of your production and some sort of stuff so uh, we have two uh, things here it is to said modeling we have proactive measures and we have some reactive measures so uh, the reactive measures if product has been deployed and in the proactive measures design and developments you need to create a design the redundant the networks okay so you one isp goes down another one you one router or firewall goes down another things comes to the pictures you have one switches goes down and another one is you know what comes to the picture at the same time okay so the react proactive measures and reactive measures these are sort two things you need to be work on the same so what is the overall goal of the threat modeling to reduce the number of security related design and coding defects so matter of fact that the what type of reduce the number of security related designs and also the coding defects uh, it is it's the main objective and goal and the second thing is to reduce the severity of any remaining defects so any defects into the company okay so you are going to do some uh, you know what disk management or you want to perform some threat modeling stuff like that and then uh, you have some proactive and reactive measures sort of thing so the the matter of fact that you need to be you know what uh, more uh, you know what concern about the assets and you need to take some precautions before the things will be coming to the like damaging the things or anything will be goes down our result is to reduce the risk okay so in the threat modeling pictures we have different different type of threats in the company and we are we creating a models to reduce the risk how we going to be you know what reduce the risk in the company suppose you have one isp take two isps you have one firewall take two firewalls and create high availability ha okay 
and suppose you have one resource you have to take another resource for backup only for the backup purpose okay so we going to identify some threats over there and then we need to you know what reduce the risk in the company so this is a threat modeling approach so we have focused on assets attackers and softwares so uh, we talking about some we has uh, we as identify the assets in the company right and we say we can say that we have we have some uh, uh, you know what proactive approaches we have some uh, reactive approaches so what are the different different approach we going to implement at what sort of place so the focus on assets identifying threats on the video valuable assets so the matter of fact that guys if you are working in a company and you need to be find it out what are the different different type of assets in the company okay uh, you need to identify the threats suppose you uh, you are using a laptop uh, or, or firewalls okay and you see that there are the number of open ports in the firewalls so this is the uh, the threats you find it out in the firewall okay and suppose you are uh, in the laptops you are not configured any bit locker or encryption sort of th things so your your laptop is going to be stolen or is misplaced and your sensitive information going to be compromised at the same time this is also the security concern the security threat is there okay and uh, suppose your company is uh, allowing the users to uh, come along with the pen drives and the, the magnetic devices like uh, the hard disk or uh, portable hard disk or usb disk so that they will going to take the data of the companies and they will going to outside so this is the focused on as as identify the threats on the valuable assets okay so valuable assets anything any assets in the company are very valuable on the company side because they are investing the money on the same then we second thing is focus on attackers so identify potential attackers and their goals so suppose you see that uh, there is a firewall and the open ports you find it out and somebody will going to compromise your your security on the firewall side okay and cyber attacks will be happen on your firewall on the open port side so what are the different different uh, you know what uh, potential attacks will be happen and you are working on a banking or banking sector and they okay in the banking sectors there are so much transactions going on on financial things and if any robbery will be happen in the banking sector there is a huge loss for the company or banking side okay so you uh, you think like a hack, hacker black hat hackers so that uh, and then act like a, you know what the gray hat hackers or uh, white hat hackers sort of stuff and focus on software potential threat against developed softwares so uh, what are different different potential threats against developed softwares stuff, stuff you need to be understand okay uh, you develop a the coder the developers are going to coding a softwares and you are the person is from the from the security analyst teams and you are coming out there and then check it out what are the misconfigurations into the uh, the websites coding okay uh, you just going to check it out some different different uh, misconfigurations or we have some security loops into the uh, uh, codes of the applications okay so uh, you just check it out all those things and also the database side as well so sql injections or different different uh, uh, backdoor attacks or uh, main the middle attacks and session hijacking max spoofing these are some different different type of attacks uh, you need to be check it out uh, in different different scenarios we have some stride model so developed by microsoft purpose is to consider range of compromise concerns so spoofing spoofing suppose you are going to uh, you know what spoof the information from the user it means that uh, what is the password of the user they, the the users are generally using the marriage anniversary password birthday passwords or uh, for their you know for their uh, paytm accounts or or they are, they are going to use same account on the amazon accounts okay so you're going to spoof the informations okay just going to guess the information that yes this was the password is all about okay so anniversary birthdays dog name pet names and friend names so anything can be happened so you are going to spoof the informations okay and you also going to spoof the informations a uh, max spoofing is one of them okay ip spoofing is one of them dns spoofing dsp uh, spoofing or sort of things okay so number of things you want to be spoofing the things tampering once you have get the informations and how do you going to temper the things 
okay uh, template means that you're going to do some modifications you're going to do some you know what uh, changes the things okay suppose you have get some uh, accessibility of the laptop of the management manager and you are going to tempering the uh, you know what the data okay so it means that integrity of the data suppose you have changed the figures in the excel spreadsheet of the salary column in the finance laptops so this is a tempering of the data reputation so the reputation and non reputations reputation means that you going to deny okay it is happen again or not and uh, in the non reputations you cannot deny information disclosure yes it is also one of them the concern from the microsoft at uh, wd okay so information disclosure you need to find it out different different ways suppose the person is coming uh, suppose uh, in the visitor coming to your office and he is going to access your wifi device or your lan device and once he going to access the wifi devices and he will he will going to use some third party software like uh, ip scanner and nmap okay and he will he will going to you know what capture all the ip address informations and then he will going to break your dev servers and different servers okay so all the information so the the intruders will be coming from inside and also from the outside so the inside intruders are more harmful than the outsiders because outside outside intruders they he don't have the informations he need to find out all the informations but in the internal intruders have the informations and he will going to he he, he have the target uh, what things need to be correct and the denial of service we have another thing is so how are you going to be denial of service suppose uh, the, the web servers are going to deny the service it is going to be hanged same time and then there is no uh, working at the same point of time okay and uh, i will giving to provide provide the informations like examples is suppose uh, there is a huge sale on the occasions of diwali or holi or anything at the same times uh, you know what the different different uh, redmi or mobile phones are very low cost okay and the number of huge traffic on the websites at the same time your server is not responsive then our service okay so at the same time the hacker is going to be uh, you know what hack the information of the web the websites okay and he is going to uh, the hacker is going to you know what providing some distributed denial of service dos and zeros attacks will be happen so service is interrupted same time of your um, of your servers uh, the e is your escalations of privileges okay escalation of privileges means that uh, suppose you you are not authorized for to dig the um, check the files of the finance but you are the it guys and you have uh, dig the, the you know what uh, permissions to yourself and then you going to check it out the files on the finance side okay so this is the escalation of privileges suppose the user is you know what providing some different type of permissions you need to provide but you provide some higher permissions sometimes you going to provide some administrative administrative permissions on the on the laptops on the desktop sites so the user is going to be downloading anything so escalation of privileges this is one of the you know what uh, the the potential hub we have some red model uh, red model designed to provide a flexible writing solution that is based on the answers of 15 questions damage potentials how severe the damage likely to be if the that is realized so as a, this is the question is going to be asked to uh, you know at the same time to yourself that if the damage will be happen then what is realized that is realized okay damage potentials reproductive ability how complicated it is the hack attacker to reproduce the exploit okay and ex explorability how hard it is to perform that attack affected users how many users are likely to be affected discoverability how hard it is for the attacker to discover the weaknesses so once you going for the uh, dread model okay so this is the security this is the uh, top five questions you going to be asked to yourself for the security reasons or you can say risk management things okay suppose you are going to uh, you are a part of very critical uh, project okay in this project suppose you are working on a cyber security or sol platform or sim solutions or sort of steps so if the sol sim solution goes down then what is the harm uh, damage potentials how it will take how time much time it will take to you know what they produce okay and this particular exploit and how hard it was performed to attack how many users are likely to be affected at the same time okay so this is all sort of things you need to check it out once you are into the same 
have some, some risk terminology. So asset valuation, value of the value of an assets, risk likelihood that is threat will be exploit a vulnerability in the asset. Threat is that is the potential of harm of an asset. So where risk valuations we can say that value of the assets. Okay. Uh, suppose you have procurement of any online UPS for one year back. So what is the cost of this online UPS right now? So asset valuations you need to perform it. The second thing is risk. Risk is likelihood that the threat will be exploited. A vulnerability is at an asset. So how the conditions? Okay, this suppose tsunami will be coming, or you can say that uh, the earthquake will be coming. So what are the different conditions? It will be happen, and it it is happen. Then what is the potential loss on the company? A threat yeah, has a potential harm to assets. Okay. So you have to find, suppose, vulnerability is, is uh, things you want to do it. In the vulnerability, you find out there is a, uh, you know what, the firewall is one of the vulnerabilities of an asset, okay? Uh, if, it is, if it is firewall will be hacked, then what is the loss? And the firewall, in the threat, we can say what is the port numbers are open, okay, for the assets. Vulnerability, a weakness, a lack of safeguard in the systems. So you have different, different systems going to be working in the company, database. Networking, operations, HR, finance. Okay, so we have they have different different things gonna working, and weakness in the systems. Okay, lack of safeguard. Suppose the users are not going to do encryption of the data to go outside. Suppose the finance head laptop is not encrypted of the data. This is also the same at Vulnerabilities find out. Exploit in instance of compromise. Okay, so uh, exploit is you know what you want to be compromised in things instance of compromise. Controls proactive mechanism to be secure vulnerabilities safeguard proactive. Okay, so you should be proactively things things you know what to safeguard the informations like that. Countermeasures reactive mechanism. So you need to countermeasure. So you have to reactive. Suppose if any survey grammar will be happen, then you need to work for the same to safeguard things like that. The total risk, we have some amount of risk before the safeguard is implemented. Second risk is risk event that is comes as a result of another risk response. The general risk is the amount of risk left over after this response. Fallback plan, plan B, workload is implant response. For this color another response does not work so the matter of fact that guys we have some different different type of uh, risk uh, uh, this dual risk secondary risk total risk okay so uh, we have some uh, some companies are going to adopt all the risks some companies are going to transfer the risk some companies are taking mitigation of the risk okay they will go to uh, some other part of the risk they will going to accept it okay and they have some fall um, fallback plan so we have plan a and plan b suppose uh, in the suppose the tsunami or earthquake will be coming at one location so the the companies have another locations in the plan b okay you are going to shift it from plan uh, plan a to plan b one location to another locations okay so this is the you know what i uh, think will be there workarounds and and planet responses for unclassification, classified risk of when the other response of does not work. So uh, this is the all the risk management sort of things we talk about. The risk management is this assessment identify assets, threats, and vulnerabilities. So uh, once you're going for the risk assessment things, okay. So identify the assets, okay. So the threat modeling comes to the picture. The company different different type of assets. Then you need to think about what are the different different threats. Suppose this firewall has open ports. Suppose this particular database have some um, leakage in the data. Suppose you have find some vulnerabilities in the in the IT platforms. Okay, so we have uh, quantity and we have quality risk. So be the member guys, we have two type of risks there. One is quantity risk is you know what the dollars it means the money matters. You want to be uh, analyze those those risk as a money. Suppose your your power failure and your power failure due to this you have number of uh, five thousand dollars 
you have lost it. So this is your quantitative risk because you can going to analyze the 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 you know what the lost. But at the same time, if you're talking about in the qualitative risk, we have some experience and Delphi techniques. It means that you cannot say that how much disaster, how much loss you you, you bear. Suppose a tsunami, earthquake, or this is you know what a COVID-19 situation, pandemic situation is there. So how much loss of the, of the companies they will not going to be analyzed because there is no financial ex expected uh, financial things will be there. Okay, so we they, they are going to be uh, expectation sort of things. Okay, as per the experience, they were going to find it out. So we have this analysis of value of potential risk. We have ALE, annual loss expectancy, and uh, we have some SLE, service loss expectancy. And uh, we have some risk mitigations for responding to a risk. How do you want to respond to a risk? This monitoring is this for, is forever. So we have some formulas to calculating the particular service loss expectancies. So the asset values, we have expense values and ARVs and good rate of expenses. So the matter of fact that guys, if you're going to, uh, you know what, doing the risk management sort of stuff, you need to understand some quality and quantitative risk is all about. Uh, so quantitative risk, we have some dollars and sort of, you know what, some damages. And if we have some qualitative risk, we have some, you know what, experience required for your, uh, how you're going to measure the risk is all about. So in the, if you're talking about some different, different companies in the modern type, okay, and they have some uh, risk measurement sort of stuff. So how you going to find it out the risk in the security parameters in the cyber crime will be happen to your company. And how do you find it out? How much risk is there? Okay. And how do you going to mitigate the risk sort of things? So how do you avoid the risk? How do you, you know what, uh, say that it's, this is a risk we can going to be accepted. So uh, we, we, if you're working on the cyber security forensic investigations reports, uh, you should be more important to understand that what type of security things will be there and how do you compromise information like that. So we you want to use some risk, risk management things that, and the risk management you just find out different different things at different aspects most, most of the times. So in the companies we have some cost benefit analysis. So uh, business impact analysis and we have also the cost benefit analysis we're talking about here. So uh, guys, uh, we have some yearly um, and this annual loss expectancies before safeguarding and yearly after implementing the safeguards and the loss of safeguards and value of the safeguard to company. So uh, mitigate uh, how it's going to uh, do the uh, this treatment. OK, so we have some mark. OK, uh, mitigations, acceptance and we have we have some reject and we have some transfer the risk. So how do you going to transfer the risk? Any 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 examples you would like to share to me like that, sir? Uh, we are cybersecurity experts. We know the computer digital forensic investigations. We are working on this. We are working on the digital forensics. Okay. Suppose any cyber crime will be happen. Okay. And you are the cybersecurity expert in the company. And how do you going to mitigate the risk? How do you find find out who has done the things and what? So, Jijo, are you available right now? So, could you please give me some examples on the same? Like uh, uh, finding the footprints, like uh, what are the uh, your voice not audible? Please, please speak a little louder. Sir, uh, you want to you want me to say like what are the footprints left by a hacker or attacker in our uh, uh, network or something like that, right? Yes. Uh, so my question is basically suppose uh, you are a cyber security expert, okay, and there is some cyber crime will be happen in your company, hmm. and if what type of risk assessment you want to be doing doing it uh, this is the mrt okay mrt is, is in the right front of you mitigate the risk acceptance the risk reject or transfer what sort of things you going to be doing it so yes jiju ramurthy and pradeep any ideas you would like to share to me sir this is the things and we were going to do this these sort of things uh, after cyber crime, uh, we can check logs, sir. And in case of uh, network uh, devices, we can. Uh, your voice is not able to please speak a little louder so that I can understand your your questions and answers. Yes, sir, in case of uh, after the cyber crime has occurred, we can check our logs in our PC and uh, in our hard disk also, so that uh, there might be some footprints will be there, through which we can. Uh, uh, get some clues 
apart from that uh, we can check the logs in the uh, firewalls and uh, uh, we can check the logs in our ne uh, networking devices and we can use wireshark also so that we can trace uh, the route of attack and then we can uh, do the recovery part sir sir uh, i just like to add like uh, if the attack is persistent or not we can uh, check ोल्यूशन so this uh, utm firewalls are able to identify the logs as uh, ramurthy has mentioned so on which ip these kind of stuffs are being uh, done uh, so it can be easily identified and uh, threat hunting need to be done by a uh, soc uh, who is responsible for uh, um, uh, monitoring this uh, sim solutions and so on so that is a uh, work need to be done by the uh, soc person who monitors this uh, threat and uh, after uh, yes, the attack has you, occurred my, my dear friends so you are talking about some mitigation stuff okay uh, what about transfer uh, this particular cyber security cyber crime will be happen how do you going to transfer this particular risk sir transfer, transfer in the sense i didn't get you sir transfer in the sense uh, Sir, can you explain what do you mean by transfer? Transfer to some other person, or uh, uh, I didn't get you, sir. Yes, I am talking about here, my dear friends. Uh, suppose you are working in a company, and this company has got some cyber crime happen. Okay, uh, somebody is going to compromise your security informations to the company, and your company is suggest you that. Uh, uh, Jijo, could you please, or somebody could, could you please, uh, could, can we transfer this particular risk to? Can we transfer this particular risk? Cyber crime things happen. Sir, uh, once it it is being done, we can uh, uh, contact our uh, forensic department, and uh, so th they uh, those who are uh, responsible for this uh, incident handling and so on, uh, we can escalate. Uh, this footprints of uh, attacks so on to them i think so that is okay uh, transfer it means that suppose you have taken the insurance my dear friends suppose you are working in a company and the laptops have some warranty of one year so is there any physical damage or anything will be happened after one year you need to pay for it so company say that can we going to transfer this particular risk you can say sir yes we can going to transfer the risk but we have have got some additional cost for the same okay the so dollar like uh, amc you are talking about sir yes amc amc yes amc, AMC. yes sir right. amc we will go for uh, uh, the hardware devices and uh, after the period of uh, Uh, warranty period you will go for amc it may term from 1 year 3 year up to 5 years and uh, the percentage of the build amount will be charged for the amc sir under amc everything will be covered like uh, spares and uh, service both will be covered in the amc yes you're right you're right okay okay then we move further so mitigate it means that how you going to reduce the risk okay you are going to some a vulnerability scanner or you going to do some meta exploit you going to use, use some wild shark yes it is for mitigation stuff acceptance you need to accept the risk whatever happen we will go to take it up reject you not accept okay you have rejected the risk you will not convince anybody transfer you take insurance you need to take go for some emcs so these are these are some types of risk management things going to be performance 
yes, we have very important terms is over there is uh, security controls. So technical controls, administrative controls, and physical controls. So I would like to know from your side, how do you want to do physical controls of your devices? Deterrent controls, preventive controls, detective controls, compensating controls, collective controls, and recovery controls, and directive controls. So these are some security controls on your informations of your devices or anything. So anything you would like to suggest me, sir, this is the uh, technical controls, this is detective controls, this is uh, corrective controls, uh, this is the things I have done in my company. Give me some examples, data examples, if you have fields. Yes, any answers you have, guys? No idea from this. Detective that um, uh, we have done uh, in our uh, quotations, we have done uh, detective controls, sir. If uh, like uh, job rotations, for example, we will purchase some uh, equipments like uh, servers, PCs, and other things. Uh, and the tenders uh, previously it was uh, uh, forwarded to a single person but later uh, after uh, I was placed in the admin uh, I just uh, rotated it to some other person from which we've got the same supply in low cost so we came to know some fraud was there with that uh, particular uh, vendor. Okay, makes sense, yes. Anything else, anybody else will want to be, tell me something like that? Yes, please, Any, anybody will want to answer me for the same. Uh, as far as this backup control, right? In our, uh... For customers in the surveillance industry, what we do uh, for uh, recording purposes, to store uh, recording purposes, most of the customers uh, who are uh, able to afford, they will be trying to go for the DSS. Okay, so what happens, the DSS will be, if any uh, surveillance device is being stolen, those records, uh, recorded uh, data are not, will not be lost. So they will be able to uh, get